I'm throwing some more test tiles. I've made a slight change to how I throw them over the previous video, if you've watched any of my other stuff. Someone asked a while ago if my tiles would lie flat for photographing or hang from the wall or store well. And the answer is not particularly, they kind of I just chuck them loose in a box. But there's a very small modification you can make for the lying flat part. And um, another slightly more involved thing you can make for the hanging on the wall. Which is that um, if you add a notch to the front, um, what you can do... Oh, by the way, this is a sort of... I don't know how well it's, the colour's going to show on there. I'll include a picture as well. It's a, an electric blue tealy sort of glaze that um, I'm currently working on. I'll post a longer video about this uh, hopefully in a couple of days. But basically it gives a point for it to break. So you just snap the base off and now obviously they're life flat so easier to photograph, easier to store. You lose the ability to write stuff on the bottom which I often do but you can write it on the back in Sharpie. That works fine. Or, oh, to be honest, on the front you get all the information you need from most of the tile, you can write what it is. Um, and then obviously if you wanted to make them hang, all you'd have to do is also add a hole, but that would take a lot more effort in the making part of it. Just because you've got to manually go through. Um, but if you've seen my previous videos on test tiles, this will look very familiar. Um, I'm not very precious about how I do test tiles. So this is all the um, leftovers from the clay that I wedged up for other things today. Um, and so it's not gonna be the most even ball of clay ever. It's about 700 grams, because that's what was left. Um, it's a bit stiff because it's been set on the side while I threw everything else. But um, all I do is open all the way down to the bat and then I probably should have centered that a bit better first. Open all the way down to the bat and just bring the mass of clay out. So it's a ring of clay. We do. Uh, and then, as you saw on that test tile, I put slip on the back. So, so slip on black slip on the back, um, which means that I can see the glaze in two different conditions so it's over white and over black because uh, I do use black slip for a couple of my styles of pieces so just brush that on the day after um, I'll throw these throw this now leave it to dry slowly overnight so it gets to kind of leather hard on the bat then I add the slip black slip on the inside and a ridge of slip that I just kind of spiral down, which gives a texture for the glazes to flow over. Um, and that means you're seeing your glaze work in a couple of different ways um, on a single test tile. It's not quite as much clay as I thought it was. So they're not going to be very tall test tiles. But, um, so I just give it that sort of T-shaped foot you saw a minute ago. Even that up a bit. And I'll rib the front smooth because I tend to rip my clay smooth when I'm throwing. Um, basically you want it to be as close to the sort of pieces you work with 
um, when you're actually making work. So if you rub it smooth and burnish, then do that. If you don't, it's probably not worth doing to the test tiles because that will show you how the glaze will look on something that you're not going to be using. Right, so you get it vertical and you can just use the point of a, a wooden tool or a thumbnail or something and just carve a groove in. It's as simple as that. You want to try and get it so that it goes far enough through that it will definitely snap there without any issue, but not so far that it snaps before. And it does weaken the tiles. So um, the first time I made some, I moved the back too quickly. They all fell over and snapped on that line, which is a, a good endorsement for how the line works, but unfortunately left me with a, a pile of useless test tiles. So um, that's it. Next day, slip, slip, trim, and then just leave them on the back until they fall off. So this is the next day. Um, this is now a leather hard, and all I'm going to do to it today is add some black slip on the reverse. And this is so that you can see how glazes will behave over two different colours of clay. So if you use, a, it doesn't have to be black slip, if you use a different colour of clay, like a just a buff stoneware or a dark stoneware, and you don't use black slip, then make a slip out of your second clay, and you can get two test tiles in one. Or if you use under glazes or something like that, then that's a better bet but uh, that does the inside as a solid colour and then well, not probably do. you just want some form of texture for the glaze to flow over on the front so I'm going to band power down so this is just the same white stone whereas the test tiles are made of uh, but it will give just a bit of surface for them to break over. And then all I'll do is I'll let it firm up for a minute before I do it. I just get a knife and cut it into segments and then just leave it until they fall off the back. Uh, I might uh, cut a little prematurely and see if I can um, slide underneath it so I can show you the profile of these. This is not how I would recommend removing them but so you can see there that notch at the base and actually I could have carved it in a bit further but um, that will give a focal point for you to snap it off 